Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own Gossip is Intel or any of its original characters and storylines. We did, however, get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by Fab underscore Fan, and you can find a link in our show notes. This story is being read to you by Danny. Gossip is Intel. Apparently, there are rumors going around about the three of us. Rael squinted at Tally as she poked at her breakfast slowly stirring the flakes of cereal till they became soggy in the room-temperature milk. The fruit she'd snagged, or, well, had ended up on her tray after she'd tried to just go for a cup of coffee and met the raised eyebrow and pointed gaze of Abigail Bellwether, plate full of protein for energy, and Tally's soft-knowing smile in the background was too sweet for her that morning. It tasted harsh against the bitterness that still coated her tongue after China, and the heaviness in her chest she refused to acknowledge where a knife had sliced through, hot and clean. The blonde felt Abigail shift beside her and tamp down the urge to reach out, place a palm on her arm or shoulder, and let the simple touch calm them both. Rail almost snorted at herself. Everyone always said she was the restless one, the one always needing to calm down. Too emotional. The same way everyone looked at Abigail and saw a stiff high Atlantic who didn't feel anything but the thirst for glory. The same way Rail thought the first time she met the taller girl. But now? Now Rail knew better. Knew after watching Abigail suffer nightmares after Charvel's wedding the way Abigail stomped and stormed around when she felt weak, the way she grew frustrated about her mother and expectations that were thrust upon her. Abigail wasn't stiff or without feeling, the complete opposite. And if Rael could help soothe the fire inside, never extinguish it, but help Abigail in the same way Rael was never truly helped with her own anger and fear, sadness and grief, then she would. Of course she would. Tally leaned forward, voice dropping like she was telling a secret. Before she could make a sound, Rail noticed the eyes staring at her. At them. Without hesitating, she pushed herself forward in her seat, jaw locked and gaze hard as stone. What? All she got back was a smirk. It clawed at her, scratched inside, egged on the urge to fight to throw a punch and brawl. She knew what it was like to be talked about, to be belittled, have rumors tossed back and forth about her. The half-breed, not fully a witch, not really a civilian, an abomination. Wrong. A session, poor, dumb, trouble, backwoods bullshit work. Dead mom, nobody fixer. She knew what it was like. She never wanted her friends to go through that. Not Tally. Not Abigail. They were good. They didn't come in with tarnished reputations and a plan to end it all quickly. Certainly not Tally. Definitely not Abigail. Abigail, who was a bellwether, a bright shining star, the one to lead them all. Almost brought down by a collar who no one heard of except for all the demerits she got, and the failures she instigated. Abigail, who almost died because of Rael, because she stayed behind. Damn it, why had Abigail stayed behind in China? 
Yes, some people are saying we only got in because your mom pulled strings. Tally piped up, looking at Abigail. The blaster didn't even let the ludicrous statement hang in the air for a second. Let people talk. Rail felt a warmth of pride begin in her chest as Abigail met the challenge head on. We'll show them what we're made of soon enough. Tally smiled and twisted to glance at the fixer. Rail pushed down the other thoughts plague in her mind and offered back a small grin. Tally's smile faltered a fraction, though. There was one more. Abigail silently sighed and pulled back her shoulders, head held high. Let me guess. We bribed General Alder to deploy us so we could be a step ahead of the others. Rail and I are going to be cannon. Tally bit her lip. Abigail deflated slightly as the redhead hesitated. Tal. Rail narrowed her eyes, concerned. What is it? Tally wet her lips and leaned forward even more. People are saying. Saying what? Abigail's tone was solid, firm, ready to hear whatever it was and meet it halfway. Tally peeked around before whispering. That you two? You know. She gestured between Rail and Abigail. We two what? Abigail asked. Rail blinked. Her mind whirred. A voice in the back of her head heard loud and clear what the Nora was saying, understood it, shouted it at her. It didn't make any sense, though. It was crazy. She was wrong, misunderstood, misheard. Tally inhaled deeply. That, that you two are together. Abigail blinked. Then she burst out laughing. Rail pulled back a bit at the loud outburst. It stung inside, more than it should. A hell of a lot, actually. Abigail nearly bent over as she tried to catch her breath. Me it! <laughs> she shook her head. Why would it? You stayed. Tally chanced a glance at Rail. Rail, who was silent, trying to think when suddenly her mind was blank. Fuzzy when her chest hurt. It felt hard to breathe. You stayed behind with Rael, Tally explained. Someone must have said something about it. There aren't any details, but people know you stuck with Rael. So? Tally exhaled gently. It's a bellwether stain behind for a collar, Rael mumbled. Abigail tilted her head to look at her, brows knit. Rail shifted in her seat, suddenly uncomfortable, suddenly wanting to move, to walk, to run. Suddenly restless. I'm nobody, more meat. Always was, Rail swallowed thickly. Why would you stay to help me? Because you're my unit, my friend. Abigail shook her head, confused. You never leave a soldier behind. You do if they're already dead. Rail finally met her eyes. Brown eyes that refused to acknowledge, but already understood. I was dead, Abs. Rail shrugged, mouth trembling as it pressed into a thin line. All you could do was follow me, too. I told you that. No. Abigail shook her head harder. I was... I killed you. Rail cut her off. Well, I did if we hadn't exploded. She sniffed and worked her jaw. I knew I was gone. I told you. I could have. I'm a fixer, Abs. Rail's eyelashes fluttered. Whether you remember or not, I know about fixing. I know you do. And you're shit at it, Rail huffed. I knew how bad it was. I knew it. And you didn't break the link. I... Abigail took a moment, throat bobbing. I wasn't going to leave you alone. What would have happened if the explosion didn't happen? I, I would have figured something out. No, you wouldn't have. Rail's voice lifted. I was dead, Abigail. I was dead. No, you weren't. Abigail's teeth barred. Rail wasn't dead. She was fine. Abigail was not going to let her die. Guys, 
Tally's hands lifted, placating, calming. They were still in the rec room, various cadets milling about, ready for a bit of gossip or a show. Whatever. Rail shoved her chair back and clambered to her feet. I'm done. She snatched up her still full bowls and trudged towards the trash. Abigail watched her go, frowning, a pain hitting her deep in the belly and twisting in her chest. We have, I know, Rail shouted back, a meeting. Abigail finished quietly. The pain only grew worse with each footstep the fixer took. There's, uh, there's one more thing. Tally reluctantly spoke up as the bellwether stared after the blonde. What? Someone else talked about your mom, that she hugged you both when you got back. Tally quirked her lips. That I'm the tag along, but your mom got you and Rail and because, because we're together. Tally nodded. Great. Just great. Abigail dropped her hands on the table. Did everyone forget I have a boyfriend and that Rail was dating a terrorist? Tally stared at her for a moment. What? Abigail crossed her arms. Nothing. Tally pushed herself to her feet. I'm finished too. I'll get Rail and meet you in a few minutes. She took two steps before pausing. Would it be so bad? Abigail sat there as the redhead wandered off, her question echoing in her mind. Her arms folded tighter against her chest, and she worked to ignore the stares and glances. Would it be so bad? Please find a fan fiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive.